All right, let's do it. The story begins with a hard-headed woman, a tough, opinionated, no-nonsense woman that served in the underground resistance efforts in World War II. While the story I am telling tonight takes place over 80 years ago, it is one still vital to share, as news headlines today reflect all too similar narratives. The story is about my late grandma Hanukkah. My grandma ended most sentences with, wonderful. She wore colorful clothing punctuated by her infectious smile. She put us straight to work anytime we'd visit, sharing vignettes of her past while we did chores. I remember watching her physically run from task to task. If I ever expressed boredom, she would say, only boring people get bored. No did, Grandma. I knew Grandma as the painter of nativity sets, the baker of fresh gingerbread, and the arbiter of wrong and right. She hosted a Christmas market every year and set up a children's store for my sister and I to manage. Once, a man tried to walk in, and my grandma immediately blocked him. The store was for children, and he was not allowed. Hanukkah was born March 23, 1925, in Benningbrook, Netherlands. She was an adventurous tomboy and loved being outside. Her family eventually moved to the city of Zondam, where she spent her days exploring the canals and countryside and would push herself to ride faster, skate harder, and sail further than anyone else. On May 10, 1940, Germany attacked the Netherlands when my grandma was only 15 years old. She described running outside the day of the invasion and thinking that snow was falling in the distance. In reality, the white specks were white parachutes carrying German soldiers. The Dutch fought back for three days, eventually surrendering to the Germans and beginning a five-year occupation. A few years into the war, my grandma eavesdropped on a conversation between her father and a member of the resistance, an underground movement that protected Jewish people during the war. Something in that conversation triggered action, and my grandma followed the woman home and demanded that she help. She was turned away at first, but my stubborn and tenacious grandma got her way and was given a job. During this time, she understood that her father had a role in the resistance movement as well, but was unsure of the degree of his involvement. Years later, she learned that her father worked as a decoder and hid many Jewish families in the attic of his home. Her father was a minister, and the families would enter, hidden among the many parishioners that would frequent the home. One of my grandma's first roles in the resistance was ferrying Jewish families to safety. She described taking trains across Holland with young families and sometimes even just escorting a child. They traveled with fake IDs and held their breaths every time German soldiers checked their documentation. A simple slip up could lead to fatal outcomes. After train services were disrupted, she was assigned a new role in the resistance. She was given the name Meep and paired with Walraven van Hall, the leader of the resistance in Holland. She served as his personal assistant. Her primary task was, a, was to arrange for meetings with senior members of the organization. Each Friday at 9 a.m., she had to find a new meeting spot for the group. Another vital assignment would be to transport huge sums of money across the country to various resistance cells. Using heavy, wooden-wheeled bicycles, money would be stored within the handlebars, a saddlebag, or sometimes in simple bread bundles hidden in plain sight. During one occasion, she transported $2 million, nearly 87 miles away. On another occasion, she described grabbing onto a German truck to catch a ride to her destination. How clever she must have felt grabbing onto the enemy truck. Even though she loved biking all throughout her childhood, ironically, after the war and later in life, Grandma detested bikes and absolutely refused to ride them. One morning, my grandma was on her way to the selected meeting house and was intercepted by two German soldiers. The soldiers escorted her to the second floor of the building. When she walked in, she saw five of the resistance leaders lying face down on the ground. The silence in the room was loud. Shortly thereafter, the soldiers took my grandma to prison. She was 18 when she was arrested. During her time in prison, she lived in a five by eight foot cell with three other women. Her cell was cold, dark, and wet. I remember asking my grandma if she was afraid when she was in prison. She said she was never afraid, but rather felt numbness, which eventually turned to anger. She was angry because she could no longer fight. During her time in prison, she wrote notes to her family. She used a piece of broken fingernail to etch each letter on toilet paper. These notes were no larger than a postage stamp, which she'd sew into the seams of her clothing. Each week, her family would pick up that clothing to launder and then return the notes in the same fashion. Upon reading, my grandma would swallow the notes whole. A week before the war ended, the Germans received orders to release thousands of political prisoners in the Netherlands, including my grandma. She would later learn that her boss, Van Hall, and other leaders from the floor that fateful morning were executed two weeks after the arrest. 
today. The movie The Resistance Banker depicts the heroics of Van Hall and others in financing the Dutch resistance. Following her release, Grandma continued to work in post-war cleanup efforts and as an activist. She traveled with other Girl Scouts cleaning up damaged houses. She even worked at the, at the Queen's Palace as a cheering up nurse to help comfort wartime patients. After a number of years, Grandma left the Netherlands to live in Sweden, where she met my grandfather, and they later ended up in Missoula, Montana. Upon settling in Missoula, Grandma wasted no time and began a project renovating an abandoned schoolhouse up Nine Mile Road and opened it as a bed and breakfast. The schoolhouse was bright yellow and surrounded by towering iron gates and colorful outbuildings similar to those found in her home homeland. She shared traditions and stories with anyone that visited. When I first heard of my grandma's wartime experiences, I couldn't fully appreciate the gravity of it. I think I added the story to the same bucket of imagination and make-believe adventures we would embark on when we visited the schoolhouse. Grandma waited until she was 70 years old to share her story through the, with the world through writing her book, Sky. My grandma truly believed that history forgotten is history repeated. Today, we are seeing similar stories play out as many are displaying bravery and courage in taking a stand and fighting against invading forces in Ukraine. Although the circumstances are quite different, events today show us that people still have the power to resist. Grandma Hanukkah never saw her work as heroic, but would say, I did what needed to be done at the time. The guts to speak out or show actions for what is right, knowing the potential consequence, is nothing short of heroic. Bravery can show up in many different ways, and by sharing these stories, we can learn from our past and continue to live with courage in our own convictions. Thank you.